Hi everyone, I've got the uh, soaps I made yesterday to cut, so I thought I'll film you. Film it for you. Um, gloves. So, these will be going up on the website in a couple of hours. I'm going to put them up at midday, so it's just turned 10 a.m. I've been at work, in the workshop, since about half eight this morning, <laughs> waiting for a delivery of my essentials, which are over there and have just turned up, so I can get on and finish my summer orders. Um, <clears throat> that was a right royal pain in the butt. Having to wait for five days for a delivery, which was supposed to come Tuesday, it's now Friday. Um, that drives me insane. Anyway, to start with the first one. These were a bit bowed because... Even though my moulds, all they sort of fit into my little wooden mould, funnily enough, they've bowed on the sides, so you won't really be able to tell, but there's like a bulge on the side, so I'll have to trim those up and make soap balls out of what we have from that, but um, from the bowed bits, it will give me just some extra soap to play with to make some soap balls for the next lot, so let's have a look what we've got. First up is Oahu Waves, which is going to look a little bit different to the one before. I've got some issues there anyway, so we'll have to scrape all that away. Um, so yeah, the colours are slightly different, I think. That's more sort of like a lighter colour. I used some lapis in there. So let's get that one cut. You might be better lower down. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I wanted to come back up last night and cut them, but I was too lazy. Yeah, it is different to the last one, so we'll have to put up some new pictures. So it's more of the sort of... The base, I didn't put any mica in this time. I used like a, a sort of copper mica last time with the sand in the base. And it made the soap accelerate really quick, so I didn't want to do that this time. But the scent... Oh my God, this is so good. The scent is the same as before, it's just the look of the soap is different, so... Hey-ho. I didn't get it as good as I got the first one, really. Well, it's not, it's not as good as the first one, but, you know, it's about the scent and how it performs at the moment. But they'll be pretty when I've tidied them all up and stuff, so still quite nice. But, yeah, changed up the blue. I think what I did yesterday, I, was, I made all five batches in one go, so I made a big batch of soap base, and then I made each one individually in its mould. And had loads of jugs out to um, put the soap mix in and stuff like that. So I didn't sort of play around as much as I usually do. Because I wanted to just get them all made. Whereas usually I'll do each one individually. Um, I mean it really helps if you can get them done that fast. Like it's really good to make a big batch and then do several soaps out of that batch. But you do have to move pretty fast because... The soap is obviously going to start to set up a little bit. It didn't really go too badly yesterday because I soaked cold. Well, pretty much cold. Um, and what am I saying? <laughs> I soaked cold so I was able to have a bit more time to play. Blow it out. Talk about brain freeze. <laughs> it is Friday. Okay, next one I made was the apple box, and that's this one here with the little little things on the top. So let's get this one unmolded. These molds are great. I got the first ones, I think it was from DIY Mold on Etsy. No, I didn't. I thought I did, but I didn't. I got them from another place. They were much cheaper. I looked at DIY Mould, and they wanted something like nearly £20 for this size. 
Whereas I remembered and I thought, that isn't what I paid before. I paid about £5. It's really cheap. And I managed to find them again. So if I could, if I'm sure that I saved it into my Etsy favourites. So I'll um, put the link down below because they were so much cheaper. And, you know, I've got tons of these things. They're like really good size. Let's measure them. I'll tell you how big they are. They are like 20, inside they're like about 24 to 25 centimetres or nine and a half inches. That's inside like the length going down there. And then the width going across inside, the inside measurement is about five centimetres or two and a half inches, something like that. Maybe a bit less actually, two inches. But yeah, really good. And then the depth, I think they're about seven centimetres high. Yeah, bang on, seven centimetres high. So they're really good, really good test moulds and they give you that nice shape of soap. So I'll try and find the link so if you're a soap maker you can get yourself some of those at a reduced price. They were like 4 99 I think, is what I paid. So I bought five of them this time. But I wish I'd bought ten, really. Because doing batches that fast, it means, you know, you get ten, ten small soaps made in just a couple of hours. So I should, I should probably order some more t at some point. But at the moment, I'm okay. I've got um, two, three... I've got six altogether. But I've only made five... No, I haven't. I've got five, sorry. Five of them. Okay, so this is the apple box, which actually looks like it's come out okay. Looks very similar to the last one, so I think I could probably not have to change the picture. So the line worked. I had to use a sieve and not my regular spoon that I use. I've got to find that. I only used it the other day and I don't know what I've done with it. Anyway, this is, um, yeah, apple box. This is the nice spicy sort of, spicy dry apple scent. It's really nice. So these bars are going to be trimmed again. As you can see, they're bowing. And that's not good for when you want to package them up. If you look at that, it's like the blooming curve of the earth. <laughs> so that's not good. I'm going to have to trim up the sides and then, like I say, make soap balls. Because my packaging is like, you know, a cigar band, so I can't really um, use them if they're bowed like that on the sides. It would just not work. So I will cut sort of down like that. It happened before when I first started using these moulds and then I made a little wooden mould for it to sit inside. But I need another four of those now, so I'll sort that out. So that's Apple Box and it's made with yellow, Australian yellow clay, that one, as the base. And then some soap balls and cocoa powder. Not much, the ingredients list is pretty small on that. And I think the fragrance I've used is allergen free, so good, good, good. Next up is Sugar Plantation. This is one of my favourites actually out of these little test batches. I love this scent. It's lovely and fresh and I like the colours. nice bright sort of Jamaican colours and there's a tiger stripe in there so let's have a look got that patchiness again in this one it's um the green oxide and and actually the last time the yellow I think the fragrance has done that it's sort of made it almost like a wishy-washy type of look but I don't mind that too much I don't ever really mind anything if anything looks really rustic I actually prefer it to be honest I like that wholesome look rather than, you know, perfection. I like, I've, I've amazed at some people's abilities to get perfect soap, but my actual preference is something rustic looking and sort of, yeah, wholesome. There we go. There's our tiger stripe, which is really effective. I watched a few people do this on their um, challenges with Amy 
and they're brilliant. I thought, wow, that's really, really cool. I'm going to give that a go. I haven't done one before. Well, maybe I have, but maybe years ago. But such an easy thing as well. Maybe not in a larger mould, but in the small mould, it's an easy thing. You just pour it, pour it, pour it, pour it in, you know, your each colour until you've got something that looks like that. Without much effort. So, actually, the it's not as wishy-washy as I thought. And there's the nice muscovado sugar on the top there. Lovely soap. I love this. Oh, man. I just love that scent. So, this is sugar plantation. As you can see, we've got a, a real curve on that. <laughs> so, I'll trim up down these sides as well. I'm guessing these are going to sell out straight away again because the people that are waiting are the people who didn't manage to get them last week so I doubt they'll be on there very long but there'll be more you know there's so many fragrances I will be testing I've like got lists of stuff that I read through and from suppliers and think which ones I want to try and then I've got a list to get through with ideas for blends already in mind, so these aren't necessarily going to stick around as they are, as one, one scent, they might end up being in a blend. There's that beautiful dark blue. Actually, some of the soap mixture was light at the end of the pot, where I'd not quite mixed it in properly with that blue, because I was moving fast with this one. Um, but it's actually given a nice effect on the top, it's almost like a black sea with waves. But um, this is actually called Black Orchid. And there's a plant that I really like. It's not an orchid, but it's a. It's called the bat plant. It's called a mac. I think a tacker. That's it. It's called a tacker. T a w c a. And they're amazing plants. And I've only ever seen one in flower in my life. And um, I wanted to call this the bat plant, but I thought no, it's got to be something that everybody sort of recognises. So Black Orchid it was. So that. This one's a really heavy floral, very, very deep, sensual scent. It's really lovely, actually. So I had to do dark colours to go with it. It's quite dark and sort of mysterious scent. So it looks like a this. So we've got, we should have this mahogany base. There's a bit of yellow in the bottom left, <laughs> where it was splashed from the one before. Um, so yeah, deep mahogany base with a dark green and mahogany swirl inside, I think, and hope, and then that dark, dark blue, bluish black top. So this one came out nice. Let's have a look in there. Oh yeah, that is nice. Okay, so we've got some kind of swirlage going on in the bottom. This is a bit shorter, this one. Only a little bit, though. That smells good. It's very rich. It'd be a good um, sort of winter, Christmassy type scent. It's a, like when days are cold, it's one of those sort of scents that make you feel cosy and warm. Black orchid. Just take those off, and then finally, we will have that candy floss scent, which just went weird yesterday. It almost looks like it's hot processed, but that's because it actually did um, heat up in the mold quite a lot afterwards. It was fine when I poured it in, and then it was just a little while after I looked around and it was really gelling. Which is why we've got that top on it, but it should still be right inside. And all this will be trimmed, so it'll look fine when it's all ready to go. I'm just going to get pictures of this, but I, the thing is, because it's going to darken, it might be a bit of a, a pain, because it's not going to be a true representation of the colour, because it's going to go dark brown. But by the time... I don't know what to do really. I could put it on and just put a note on there just to say this will be dark brown. It's in a few days I reckon that's going to go. 
So let's cut it and have a look. I think it will look any different to how it does now. Really. It's just all going to be one colour because I didn't colour any of it at all. It's just the soap base and then that the vanilla content in there is making it go dark. There we go. It's just a plain... Actually, we're not even getting like a any sort of edges, so I'm not sure how dark that's going to go. It's going slightly darker on the top, like a sort of tan colour. In this room, the lighting's a bit different, but I'm not really getting the line around the outside that you normally get if it's going to go dark, so maybe it won't go as dark as they say. God, it smells just like candy floss. It's amazing scent. So, for a sort of Halloween and autumn scent, this is going to be perfect. Because I base my Halloween and autumn range around Something Wicked This Way Comes, the film. I've got... That's where Shadow Show came from, which is now a permanent member of the team. <laughs> um, Toffee Moonface actually wasn't based on that film, but that's another one that's going to come back soon. Um, I've just got to get the fragrance made by the supplier because um, it was discontinued, but I'm able to ask the perfumers to, to make it. So um, I've just got to save up and get enough money together to buy it because they want you to buy bulk. So it'll be an exclusive scent. Well, part of it, it's just one of the components in there they've stopped doing. But this is going to be really lovely in a blend. So... Yeah, autumn, Halloween, I'm already starting to think. I've got things sort of lined up in my head for what I'm going to do this year. Um, Dust Witch will be back and Dark Carnival will be back. There's lots of really nice scents in that range. Lots of nice scents in every range, but I really love the autumn and Halloween stock because it's. I really get to play with what I love the most, really. I like all the dark scents and, you know, spooky things. Okay, so there's the four, sorry, one, two, three, four, five soaps. And the glove. There they are. Dim's Dim. So I've got to get a new picture of that one on the end. That actually looks quite nice. Looks sort of really um, more Cornish than Hawaiian. <laughs> this one I'm talking about here, that blue. So I just need to get a new picture. All right, I will see you soon. Bye.